This program is brought to you by the Vegetarian Society of Hawaii, a nonprofit organization dedicated to sharing with the community the many benefits of a vegetarian diet. Free monthly meetings include vegetarian experts found locally and on the mainland, quick and easy cooking demonstrations, and healthful and delicious food samples. Members enjoy an informative quarterly newsletter, social activities, and discounts at many vegetarian-friendly restaurants and health food stores. For an application, call 944-8344. That's 944-8344. Or visit our website at www.vsh.org. vsh.org. Aloha, and welcome to the monthly public meeting of the Vegetarian Society of Hawaii. It's good to see all of you here. The Vegetarian Society of Hawaii continues to celebrate our 20th anniversary this year. From a handful of pioneering founders back in 1990 to becoming one of the largest nonprofit vegetarian organizations in the nation, we've continued to promote human health, animal rights, and protection of the environment by means of vegetarian education. We're videotaping tonight's presentation for broadcast on the VSH TV series, Vegetarian. On Oahu, you can watch it on Alelo Channel 52 every Wednesday at 11 a.m. and on the first and third Thursdays of the month at 6 p.m. You can also go to our website, vsh.org, that's vsh.org, to see videos of this and many of our previous presentations. You'll also find lots of other great information there, including recipes, our famous dining guide, past newsletters, and even a link to our new Facebook page. It's now time for our special guest. We're delighted to have with us tonight Hesh Goldstein. Hesh has been hosting a radio show called Health Talk since 1981 when he managed Down to Earth. He pays for his own airtime and has no sponsors so as not to compromise his honesty. The show airs on Saturdays from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. on K108, that's 1080 on the a.m. dial. At 71, Hesh still plays two to three hours of basketball a week and teaches women's self-defense classes based on 20 plus years of Wing Chun training. He has been a vegetarian since 1975 and a vegan since 1990. He has no illnesses and takes no medications. Hesh feels that if he can do it, anyone can. Tonight, Hesh will present Why Vegan? How a vegan diet can save your health and money. Please welcome Hesh Goldstein. Just to give you a little bit of a background, when I became vegetarian, it was not planned and not something I even thought about. Uh, I was living in Aspen, Colorado. The person I was living with said, why don't we become vegetarians? <laughs> and I said, okay. <laughs> and uh, I went to the freezer and I took out about I don't know, $75 worth of frozen dead body parts. And I, I stuck them in a bag and she, she said to me, what are you doing? I said, well, if we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this. So I just came to a welfare mother who lived behind us and that lady was stoked. I mean, I don't know if she ever got heart disease or cancer, <laughs> but, but I was real happy about that. That's how it started, except the lady left a, w a week later, and I was really stuck because, you know, I thought brown rice was white rice with food coloring on it. People would tell me, why don't you make a smoothie? And I said, what, what do you mean smoothie? What, what's the smoothie? And they said, well, you get a blender. And I said, what's a blender? I mean, you know, I was just a little kid growing up in Newark. My mother did all the cooking, and then I got married. My wife did all the cooking. My girlfriend did all the cooking. I don't know. So anyway, it was just one of those things It was kind of an evolving process, but I was still hooked on Swiss cheese and mocha fudge ice cream. <laughs> and that, that gave way in 1990 because I just couldn't handle the, uh, the lactose intolerance. So we're gonna, get, we're gonna get started, but I'm sure there's a lot of, and I'm not gonna ask, but I'm sure there's a lot of people here that 
are not vegan and a lot of people that may not be vegetarian. And all I'm going to tell you is that there is a concerted effort to keep it that way. Because you have certain industries that make a real substantial profit by people eating the standard American diet so they can get sick, so they can go to the doctors and buy pharmaceutical drugs. So what we're going to do today is we're going to have you get some information so you can reverse your heart disease, so you can reverse your high blood pressure, so you can not be constipated anymore, you can get rid of type 2 diabetes. It's that simple. So, why vegan? If you knew what the animals went through to get onto your plate, you, you would stop eating that in a heartbeat. It is the most callous, impersonal, and cruel industry ever put on the planet. It's even worse than sending guys to war. What they do to animals. Because they don't treat them as living entities. They treat them as prospective profit centers. They tie ropes around their necks and they drag them in trucks. They don't care if they stand up. And if you ever heard the word downer, a downer is a cow that's either dying, diseased, decaying, injured so bad they don't care because that's a dollar sign because that is going to go on your plate so they can take money out of your pocket so they can live a very nice lifestyle so being vegan just like it says right there is cruelty free eating yeah okay you have to kill the broccoli. You have to, <laughs> you have to kill a mango. But the degree of violence between picking a mango and slitting the throat of a cow or a pig or hooking a fish and watching him flop because of lack of oxygen that he needs desperately, which he gets from the water. Uh, years ago, after high school, before college, I had to get a job to make some money so I could pay my way through school. And I got a job working for a butcher. And I was a delivery guy. And two profound things happened. One thing was I, I had to go down to the slaughterhouse to pick stuff up. And it was a kosher slaughterhouse, and that is about as hip hypocritical as any other slaughterhouse on the planet, because the guy just stands there covered in a, a black rubber apron and gloves and boots, and he's got a knife, and the cow comes by, and he goes, whack! And the next one comes by, and he goes, whack! And this conveyor belt moves down, and four or five people are just ripping off the skin off this guy, cutting them up into little pieces and sticking them in the freezer. But there's poetic justice, too. I remember I was in New York once, in Manhattan. It was a slaughterhouse near 42nd Street. And the conveyor belt broke in getting it from the truck into the slaughterhouse. And I saw this black cloud over this flesh that was hanging there. I said, my God, what is this black cloud? Is the sun is out. What's and then as I got closer, I could hear bzzz, and as I got really close to the black cow, must have been about six million flies just having a picnic. And this is what you guys eat. <laughs> this is reality. Now, if I'm grossing you out, great. <laughs> I don't keep track of eating five fruits, because that's my diet. I mean, it's my diet. It's what I eat. I wake up in the morning and see, what's, what's the typical day for diet for Hesh Goldstein? For breakfast, maybe a mango and maybe some, like this morning I had a mango and some pistachio nuts. That was breakfast. For lunch I had a Fuji apple. And for dinner, before I 
came here because I was in a hurry. I made some toast and I took some Russian kale and I took some hummus and lettuce and tomato and cucumber and that was my dinner and I mean I'm, I'm six foot and I weigh 195 pounds and I'm not hungry and I don't snack in between meals and just like it was said yes I am 71 years old even though the picture you saw was taken last week but I've aged considerably since <laughs> Yeah, and I'm still playing two hours of basketball a week. I can't jump as high, and I can't run as fast, but I'm out there banging bodies, and I, I have a great time. I've been doing this since I'm five years old, and, you know, why quit? Just because I'm, I'm old, and I should be a basket case, and I should sit in front of a TV, or... No, that's not my style. You know, I, I race walk and I do martial arts and I teach women's self-defense classes and I play basketball and I play racquetball and I, I just, you know, I swim and I, I just... Life's too short to just sit in front of a TV your whole life. Well, anybody want to know what the day is? I can help you with that. He ate five to nine for better health. Well, see, they don't mean it because the reality is Nobody's going to make any money. Think about it. If you guys, if every one of you today became vegan and you stopped eating anything that had a face in a mother and you just ate vegetables and fruits and whole grains, do you know how many people would be out of business? Do you know how many doctors would be driving taxi cabs in this town just to make a buck? That's what would happen. Because keeping you sick provides a lot of money for a lot of people. Me, I don't want to give them the money. No way. I stopped a long time ago. So if you value what you have in your pocket, and you would rather use what you have in your pocket to better your life and have a better quality of life, then you gotta stay away from doctors, you gotta stop taking prescription drugs, and you really have to stop eating anything that had a face or a mother. And you should stop eating dairy products, and you should stop eating eggs. And if you don't believe me, the next time you guys eat your eggs, don't wash your dish. Leave it out for a day or two. And then when you have to clean it with a chisel, think about what it's doing in your arteries. The food pyramid. Oh man. You know, the way, they, the way they started this food pyramid, you know what they put on top? They put meat and poultry and fish, and they put eggs and they put everything on top, because that's where the money is. Nobody's going to make any money with the vegetables and the grains and the fruits. So we want to uh, kind of invert that a little bit, although this doesn't do that, because you notice all the milkshakes up on the top? Well, the dairy industry is very powerful. And the dairy industry only cares about money. Case in point, Bill Clinton, when he first became president, he had appointed a woman, Dr. Jocelyn Elders, as his Surgeon General. And Dr. Elders, in the first week, came out and said 50% of Caucasians are lactose intolerant. 80% of blacks are lactose intolerant. 85 to 97 percent of Asians, Native Americans, those of European Jewish descent, are lactose intolerant. Dr. Elders never finished out the week. She was fired. You can't say that. Because the dairy industry would suffer. And they don't want to suffer. They don't mind keeping you sick. They don't mind if you're lactose intolerant. They could care less. All they want you to do is keep drinking milk. Okay, the USDA requires that every public school in the country serve milk. And they offer incentives if the schools have milk dispensing machines. They could care less that 70% of the black population is lactose intolerant. If I'm a kid and I'm going to school and I'm lactose intolerant, I have to have a note from my doctor if I want to drink anything other than milk. You think that's right? You need to think about that. 
If you think it's right, then okay. If you don't think it's right, then you're on, you're on the right track. U.S. subsidies. Oh, man. The other day I went into Quiznos to buy a sandwich. Vegan sandwich. Without the guacamole, because the guacamole doesn't have avocado in it. It's got all kinds of stuff to make it look and taste like avocado, but Quiznos guacamole is all chemicals. And basically that's probably coming from some factory on Route 1 in New Jersey because that's where all those companies are that make those chemicals. So anyway, so I get, you know, they had a thing. You could get their foot long for five ninety nine. I said, okay, I'll take one of those. And I get up to the cash register and she says to me, it's nine eighty nine. I said, nine eighty nine? The sign says five ninety nine. She goes, No, that's that's if you're getting flesh. I said, But I'm getting vegetables. She says, no, I'm sorry, vegetables are more money. Because what happens is with your subsidies, basically seventy percent of your subsidies goes to meat and dairy and all of that, anything how to face in a mother. 3% goes to vegetables. 70% for flesh, 3% for vegetables, because there ain't no money in vegetables. So you want to keep the public eating flesh foods, that way they stay sick, that's way all kinds of industries make money. And then you have the FDA, the Fraud and Drug Administration, that fosters this. And then you have the CDC that tells you, you know, the Centers for Deceit, Control, and Procrastination. Anyway, okay, so here's your subsidy pyramid. So it's $3.8 billion for sugars and fats <laughs> and dairy and meats. And 170 million for fruits. You notice the whopping amount for vegetables? Can anybody read that? I can't read that. That's like 3%. You know, what does that come to? $22,000 for subsidies for vegetables. It's crazy. And just like that says, the USDA subsidies, 22 times as much for bad food rather than good food. So here we are. Why does a salad cost more than a Big Mac? You gotta love it. So here we go. Fruits and vegetables, 0.37% federal subsidies. Nuts and legumes, well, now we're starting to get up there, 1.91%. Sugar, oil, starch, and alcohol, because, you know, come on, we got to have drunks. If we didn't have drunks, we wouldn't have anyone to make fun of. 10.69. Grains, 13.23. And get down to meat and dairy, 73.8%. Does anybody see anything wrong with this picture? Now, why is it that more money goes to food that is going to keep you ill rather than food that is going to keep you well? That's a good question for you guys to think about. Now, the federal nutrition recommendations, well, they say that you should eat sugar, oil, and salt very sparingly. I hardly ever eat sugar. The only oil I use is maybe a little extra virgin olive oil. Oh, that's interesting. If you guys are going to stir fry stuff, you don't want to use extra virgin olive oil, no matter how good it is, because it has a real low heat tolerance, and it means it gets hot real quick and it gets rancid real quick. You should use light olive oil, because that's up there in the four or five hundreds, and that'll take the heat. Vegetable and fruits, nine servings, and grain, 11 servings. I never thought about protein. I never thought about protein in my whole life since I've been a vegetarian. I never wondered if I got enough. I would never wondered if I didn't get enough. I just ate normal. I would have grains and quinoa, which is a grain from South America, is the best protein grain that you can buy. So you eat grains, you eat vegetables, maybe a little bit of tofu, and whatever, that's all I eat. And, you know, I don't think I'm emaciated. However, when you eat stuff that has a face in the mother, then you're part of the $2 trillion medical bill. And that's 2004, and I shudder to think what that figure is now. And you wonder why we have an obesity epidemic. I would love to find this.
The average American consumes 640 pounds of milk and cream, 17 pounds of ice cream, like 100 pounds of cheese, and everybody is wondering why there's an obesity epidemic with the kids. You know, it's like, remember the game when you were a kid, you go, fat, fat the water rat. That's, that's why, you eat fat, you get fat. You don't eat fat, you don't get fat. It's not rocket science. The U.S. spends more on health care than any other country. Why is that? Why do we spend more on health care? Do you think it's because more people here are sick than anywhere else? You got people in other countries that don't touch half the stuff that we eat. You got people that would not take dairy products with recumbent bovine growth hormone in it, which is also known as Posilac, which is given to the cows to make them produce more milk. It also creates mastitis, which means that their udders are full of pus. But who would know that because pus is white and so is the milk and you drink the milk and you wonder why you're getting fat and sick? That is not a great milkshake, folks. Trust me, I, it's not something I would like. Hygieia, that's the woman, that's the daughter. And Asclepius? Okay, well this is the guy that was the father of prescription drugs. He said, eat drugs. Don't worry about healthy food. His daughter was the one who said, no, you should think about healthy food and sanitation. Basically, she was the daughter, like it says, of the god of medicine. See, I like her. I, I like him. I mean, he could run a pharmaceutical company for all I care. Now, this guy, Osler, he said that the desire to take a pill is all that distinguishes man from animals. And the first duty of the physician is to educate the masses not to take medicine. Now, I agree with this guy. What's wrong with that? Shouldn't a doctor come out of medical school to want to keep a patient healthy? But how is he going to do that when he only has two hours of nutrition classes in four years of medical school? How do they know anything? I went to a graduation ceremony once down at the Burns School of Medicine. It was very interesting. And I looked at all the doctors and I looked at all the people coming in and it was like looking at a, a before and the after show. Well, the guys that were coming into medical school, they looked really healthy. But the doctors were on crutches and in wheelchairs and they were hobbling and they were severely overweight and there had to be something wrong with that picture. That's because medical school doesn't teach them to be doctors. Oh, I love this guy. Bernays has got to be the worst. I mean, if you can read what he said here. He said that bacon and eggs is the ideal American breakfast. He said that World War I would make the world safe for democracy. He helped Alcoa Aluminum and ADA Advanced Fluoridation. Don't get me started on that. That's a story for another time. He helped overthrow Guatemala for the United Fruit Company. And he said that smoking was a sign of female emancipation. This, this, I can't say it because I promised Bill I wouldn't say it, but this is not a nice person. <laughs> okay, exercise versus calories. The average person needs 2,000 calories a day. I really don't think that I come close to that. Now, if you want to burn calories, you got to run five miles to burn 500 calories. If you drink a soda, you get, not only do you get 100 calories, but if you ever look at the label and it says sugar and you see the number of grams, so let's say it says 20 grams. You divide that by four. Five teaspoons of sugar in that can. Sometimes there's six. The, the 7-Eleven Big Gulp has something like 52 teaspoons of sugar in it. You have to run a mile, one mile, to work off the calories 
of one Coca-Cola. See the poor kids sitting there? You guys heard of weapons of mass destruction? And everybody thought it was in Iraq? Uh uh Weapons of mass destruction in the school lunch program. That is where the weapons of mass destruction are. Because they take all the leftover stuff and it goes to the schools. Look at, look at McDonald's spent $823 billion in advertising dollars to promote child obesity. You can go into McDonald's, you can buy, you can buy a triple bacon Whopper with quadruple cheese and whatever for 39 cents, but you have to go somewhere to buy a salad for $13. Does, does that make sense to anybody? It, I mean, am I the only guy who's seeing something wrong with this picture? Oh, I remember years ago, you see this hamburgers grow on trees. Well, they used to have a thing, McDonald's used to have a thing where they had hamburger patches. Does anybody remember that? And the hamburger patches they had in the grass were little hamburgers. This, now we're getting sad here. What's the purpose of a dairy cow? The purpose of a dairy cow is to give milk. What happens to the dairy cow when the milk days are done? Dairy cow winds up at McDonald's. What happens to the male cows that don't have a chance to give milk? That started the veal industry. They take them and they put them in a box so they can't move because they want to keep their muscles really soft and, and nice and tender so they can get a lot of money for that. And then they have downer cows, which I talked about earlier, that they're using downer cows. Uh, for those of you that eat stuff that had a face or a mother, they are now, and it's in the food supply, they're cloning beef. See, the cows have the last laugh. They all come back in the form of heart disease, cancer, type 2 diabetes, heart disease, high cholesterol, but they're long gone. But you have to live with that for the rest of your life and deal with that. And of course, you have to go to the doctor who keeps you on prescription drugs for the rest of your life. Okay, there's a movie. These are your patties, folks. This is what you like to eat for dinner. Nice little hamburger patty. So I wonder how it gets that way. I wonder, oh gee, what a nice little guy. He's just kind of confined and what, what's this guy doing? Is he going to bathe him? Is he going to walk? Oh, that doesn't look good. Oh no, oh my goodness. Oh, is he trying to stun him so he can kill him? This is, this is how what winds up on your plate gets to your plate. And a lot of times, these guys don't die. A lot of times, they are alive. And they kill them. They start skinning them while they're still alive. See, this guy couldn't care. He couldn't care less. He's getting paid by the hour. That's his job. Now, what if that cow is not dead? What if he's just stunned? And you think this is bad. You think this, oh boy. And he's still alive when they're doing this? And, they're, and he's writhing in pain? You think they care? You think anybody here has a heart? You think anybody is concerned about a poor, a dumb animal? So I ask each and every one of you, what is the condition of your heart? I didn't ask you what your heart's condition is. I didn't ask you if you had a heart condition. I'm asking you what is the condition of your heart. If this bothers you, how can you eat it? If it doesn't bother you, heaven help all of us. You understand where advertising dollars go? Advertising, there's a line, there's a line there, number 20, advertising which means that a business can deduct advertising expense. No matter how much they spend,
They can deduct advertising. And how do they advertise for kids? Next time you guys go into Safeway or Times or any one of those places and go check the cereals out, you know, with the bright packages and the nice funny faces and everything, go check what, what level they're on. Gee, gee, mom, I want that cereal with the, with the funny face on it. Gee, it just happens to be where that kid can pick it. This is all planned. No one really cares about health. They care about money. And you should realize that because you guys out there are cash registers. And they want to open the, your drawer and take your money. And they could care less about you. Yes. And TV, you think TV is not driven by advertising dollars? What do you see? When is the last time you have ever seen an ad for a vegan diet? <laughs> I rest my case. No, because there's no money in it. There is no money there. But you'll see ads for, if you spend $3, you'll get 150 chicken wings at Kentucky Fried Garbage or whatever. And look, look at the burger. The burgers, I mean, you need a ladder to get up to the top. And then the fries? Oh my God, with the grease that the stuff is cooked in? Yeah, okay, maybe it's got a nice flavor. Who knows what they put in it? But this, this is where TV makes their money. Next time you watch a show, next time you watch a sporting event, go look at the advertising. You know, they're selling cars or they're selling food. And they're not selling lettuce, trust me. Oh, here's the kid again. Weapons of mass destruction. Okay, food for thought. Among all the genres, children's shows have the highest proportion of food ads. So, on Saturday or Sunday, when you guys put the TV on in the morning, which is all kids shows, check out the advertising. I don't think you're gonna find some, some ad for something substantial. I think you're gonna find food ads with little characters, little little pudgy little characters with, with happy faces all going, eat me, buy me, I want to go into your house, I'll be your friend. Okay, great. Uh, there they are. Here we go, back into the, the school system. Okay, the average 8 to 12 year old in the course of a day sees five ads for candies and snacks, four ads for fast food, four ads for sodas, three ads for cereal, two ads for restaurant, one ad for prepared food, and two ads for the categories combined of dairy, water, juice, meat, poultry, fish, fruit, vegetables, or grains. Five ads for candy and snacks, four ads for fast food, four ads for sodas. And they wonder why we have an obesity epidemic in this country with the kids. We wonder why, why five-year-olds weigh 600 pounds and they say, oh well, my God, we got to really do something about that. Hey, can you crank up that ad for the soda? I don't think it played on enough, enough homes. <laughs> yeah, see what this is? When you establish the drinking of milk in young children, that carries over to their adult life because it's all about conditioning. Individuals who restrict their diet to plant foods may be at risk of not getting amino acids. Do you know that the shrink industry has created a healthy eating disorder? You believe that? You can have a healthy eating disorder and you have to take a pill. It's like refrigerator door syndrome. You know what refrigerator door syndrome is? That's when you open up the refrigerator and you look for something that wasn't there five minutes ago when you opened it up. That's refrigerator door syndrome. Then they have motivational deficiency disorder. We used to call that lazy when I was a kid. Then they have, then they have, <laughs> they have consumption deficit disorder. And your, your shrink has to prescribe a drug for consumption deficit disorder. And what is that? That's the anxiety you're in because your neighbor has more than you do. But the psychiatrist, see, they, they, they have something for everyone. So they don't want anyone to feel left out but healthy eating disorder. 
I mean, I know they're coming to get us. <laughs> if they could find us, trust me. Th these are who's who for the bad guys. And they're all listed and who they are for. And this guy, number one, Dennis Beyer, he consulted for virtually every major food company, including McDonald's. The Global Council on Health. <laughs> I mean, my God, these people get paid for this. Do you know that they are paying people who work for the pharmaceutical industry to do independent research on the drugs to put out the reports so you know that the drug is good? So you got me, I work for Pfizer. And they say to me, Hesh Goldstein, we need you to do an independent test on this drug so it comes out positive so people know they can buy it. And I say, okay. You, you see, that's objective. That's the way it works. There's such scandals that it's a mind blower. You walk down the street. I remember I was walking down the street one day on King Street near Down to Earth. There was this guy in front of me. And I couldn't see anything. It was like being behind a semi. And I couldn't get around him because it was either go in the bushes or go on the street. I said, excuse me, sir, can I get by you? And this woman turned around and she said, what do you mean, guy? What do you mean, sir? I said, oh, excuse me, oh my God. So this is what's happening. It's out of control. The tongue has taken over the intelligence. If it pleases the tongue, forget the intelligence. And it's conditioning. I was raised in a family my grandparents came over from Europe. My parents were born in New York City. They were conditioned by their parents. We ate three squares a day of everything that had a face and a mother, dairy products and eggs. And I grew up that way. And I got married and my wife, of course, she was the same thing. And that's why we're giving our kids. And if it wasn't the fact that I wound up in Aspen, and the girl said to me, hey, let's become vegetarians. And I said, okay. I, I shudder to think where I'd be right now. I don't think I'd be playing basketball three or two hours a week at 71. I really don't think that. But look at this. You think this is normal? I don't. Okay, this is cool. Those little, little blocks that you see there, they are sugar cubes. <laughs> let's see. You got a quart of Coke. There's two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, seventy, eight, nine, twenty, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, thirty. Thirty-one cubes of sugar in a quart of Coca-Cola. And even the little can, there's five, eight, ten, and each one is equivalent to a teaspoon. That can, eight ounce, is that what that is? That little can, eight ounces. Ten teaspoons of sugar. You think that's normal? Check out the haagen -Dazs. I mean, I can't even count that high. And then look at the strawberries. Oh, man. And it's natural sugar. Two teaspoons in all those strawberries. I remember I tricked, I tricked my girlfriend once because she used to be a haagen -Dazs freak. I was eating soy delicious non-dairy ice cream, which had a lot less sugar than the haagen because that had eggs in it, too. And uh, one day I came to the house and I hid the chocolate velvet and I took her haagen and I scooped it out and I threw it out. And I said to her, haagen came out with a, a brand new formula. And she said, you want to try it? She goes, yeah, okay. So I gave it to her in the haagen container. She says, wow, it's really nice. It's light. It's not so much fat. It tastes great. I said, yeah, it's really good, yeah. She goes, wow. Where, where do you get this? I said, I, she said, I really like this. I said, oh, you get it right here. And I pulled out the chocolate velvet and there was this blank look on her face, you know. She said, where'd you get that? I said, I got it down to earth. Where else do you think I got it? And she said, you tricked me. I said, no kidding. I said, but you like it. So what are you worried about? <laughs> so a year later, so a year later, we're, we're tripping in Waikiki and it was a haagen place. And she goes into the haagen place and she says, I want to get some haagen -Dazs. I said, trust me, you're not going to want it. She goes, don't tell me what I can do. I am a liberated boy. I said, okay, okay. You want Haagen-Dazs? Go get your Haagen-Dazs. I said, 
You're not going to be able to finish it. She goes, oh, come on. So she got this big chocolate haagen ice cream. She took one bite and she, oh, my God. She threw it in the trash. Too much fat, too much sugar. It doesn't work. Strawberries, fresh fruit, two teaspoons of sugar in, in a dozen strawberries versus a scoop of sorbet that's got seven teaspoons of sugar. You really want to do that to yourself? Oh yeah. A vegan diet does cause weight loss. Why? Well, basically you eat more food. Okay, but seriously, you eat more food because it's, it, it's, it's bulk, it fills you up. But the, the good part is the calories are way less. I mean, I can make, you know, my typical salad when I make my salad. Okay, I put in Russian kale, I put in cucumbers, I put in tomatoes, I put in onion, I put in some mushrooms, I put in a little bit of hummus, I put in some three bean chili, and then I use as a salad dressing a mango. That's my salad dressing, a mango. And then I put in some chia seeds. And I, I'll tell you, I am totally stuffed when I eat that. And I'll go out and play basketball on that, or I'll go out and work all day, or whatever. But how many calories am I getting? Maybe 400 calories? You go to McDonald's, and you get one of those guys like that, and order a fries and a soda, you're getting 3,000 calories. And you wonder why people are blotting the sun out when they walk down the street. So, <laughs> so if, if you're eating, like it says, a third more food, it fills your stomach, you get the nutrients that you need, but you're nowhere near your calorie requirements. So isn't the whole thing when you eat, let's face it, okay, when you eat, you want to enjoy yourself. Am I, am I wrong to say that? Everybody wants to enjoy what they're eating. You want to feel full, you want to feel satiated, you want to feel like you had a great meal. Well, why does it have to be anything to have a face in a mother? What are you doing is sucking the spices out of it. I mean, I never heard anybody who enjoyed drinking blood to think that this was a really good meal. But if you can spice up a nice salad, I mean, okay, for you, for you flesh eaters out there, before you eat any meal, eat a piece of fruit. That's my suggestion. Why? Because that piece of fruit is going to take space. You remember when Howard Lyman was on Oprah Winfrey's show and he was talking about how bad meat was and Oprah said, I will never eat meat again. Do you know what happened? She got sued for millions by the Cattlemen's Association because she denigrated meat. She got sued. Of course, they prevailed, but of course, they had to pay legal fees. You know, the lawyers always win, no matter what. You know what they call 10 lawyers on the bottom of the ocean? A good start, right? <laughs> All these guys, all these guys are affiliated with the U.S. Department of Agriculture. You have a guy who is now the food czar that was appointed by President Obama. And his name is Michael Taylor. Michael Taylor used to be in Monsanto's law firm who is now the food czar. Does that give you some indication of where we're heading food-wise? See, all these people, like the FDA, the Fraud and Drug Administration, is a revolving door from the pharmaceutical industry. The U.S. Department of Agriculture is a revolving door for the large food companies and for companies like Monsanto. So how do you escape their thumb on you? It's simple. You take responsibility for yourselves. You have to take responsibility for you. You got to take it out of the hands of people who only see you as a profit center. Okay, Glickman, this is the guy who used to be 
Clinton's, the guy of the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Look at the USDA surpluses that were dumped into the school lunch program. Check the bottom one. <laughs> See, this is how it works. The kids, you know, train them early. You train them early, you got them hooked for life. It's not nice. This is reality. The subsidies create decreased prices for bad food to make you eat more, right? Increased consumption, which creates a higher profit margin, which creates more advertising and food industry education, which results in more IRS tax deductions. Now, you see what it says here, freezes out the media use of the dreaded V word. <laughs> like I said, when's the last time you saw anything in the newspaper about a vegan diet? Recently, United Nations came out with a report. It was in the last Vegetarian Society newsletter, and they said, and it was, I talked about it on my show, they said that the entire world needs to adopt a vegan diet Otherwise, there will not be enough food to go around until the year, by the year 2050. That's 40 years from now. Did anybody ever see that in the newspaper or on the news? No, I didn't either. That's because they wouldn't run that. Because next time you read the newspaper, especially on Fridays, Go check out their advertising in their, in their supplement. Where's all the advertising coming from? It's coming from restaurants. And what do the restaurants sell? They ain't selling vegetables, folks. So you get more sick, and yet everybody complains that we have higher health costs. You want to be fat and sick? <laughs> look at Ronald. Oh, he's so happy. Oh, God. look, he's so happy. Oh, look at my bloody knife. Oh, it's so... You have french fries, you have, what is it, what, some kind of burger with cheese, with another burger with bacon. I mean, look, look at this stuff. This is what you are told you have to eat. Has anyone ever put a, you ever see a salad in any of these advertisings? No. There ain't no money there. This is where the money is. No one's going to get rich selling you a salad. It's the most expensive thing you can buy when you go into a, a natural food store is the greens, the vegetables. You go to McDonald's, if you, if you go, you know, I, I shop at Down to Earth. I used to run Down to Earth, so I shop, I'm, I'm, I'm partial to Down to Earth. So I go to Down to Earth and I buy stuff. And I go and I buy my broccoli and I buy my cauliflower and my tomatoes and all that stuff. I try to stay away from processed foods, except I have a stepson who lives on processed foods. When I don't buy processed foods, I can walk out of the store for less than 50 bucks. Once I start buying processed foods, now all of a sudden I'm hitting the century mark. You know what happened in California? There was a, a, a county, Kern County, and Kern County had a, a, a slaughterhouse that was upwind from an almond orchard. So the runoff from the slaughterhouse came down and flooded the almond orchard. And the almonds got contaminated. So the California Department of Agriculture, being the humanitarian and the righteous people that they are, said, you have to radiate all the almonds coming out of California. Of course, nothing wrong with the slaughterhouse. You got all that doo-doo water that's coming down, but that's okay. We have to radiate all the almonds. So I was very fortunate because I happened to find the source for almond butter, which is coming out of Italy, where at least they don't irradiate anything. So at least I'm back in almond butter for a while. But I haven't eaten almonds in three years. Okay, overweight people are an increased risk for diseases and health conditions. And you might want to look at this because this is not make-believe. This is all documented. People are hypertense, they have high cholesterol, they have high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes. Do you know how easy it is to reverse type 2 diabetes? All you have to do is eliminate fat. Type 2 diabetes is gone in two to three weeks. It's that simple. Is anybody going to tell you that? No. Why? Because 
Do you know what a patient is? You know what the, what, what the word patient is a euphemism for? Anybody? Sucker. Customer. And what, is, what connotes the success of a business? Repeat customers. You, you know, unless you have a doctor like Terry Shintani or John McDougall or, or Joel Furman or people like this, they're going to tell you, change your diet, I don't care if I see you again. But doctors don't tell you that because they paid a lot of money for medical school. I mean, all this stuff, cancers, osteoarthritis. To be slender and healthy. There you go. Oh, well, see, these almonds came from Italy. <laughs> I can tell them. I can tell. But you see, this is all fruits and vegetables and seeds and nuts and grains. This, this is health. And if you, if you go out into the sun, 10, 15 minutes a day and get vitamin D, you don't have to buy supplements, you'll stay healthy. And believe it or not, 10 minutes a day wards off cancers. The U.S. Department of, and I have to say agriculture, supports unhealthy foods. The uh, Food Nutrition Board, <laughs> they tell us to eat them, unhealthy foods, and the IRS gives tax breaks for their advertising. So the solution, okay, let us cancel all the subsidies, okay? Now let's assume everybody here is a flesh eater. And I know you're not, but let's assume that. My question to you is, if you were faced with chopped meat costing you $200 a pound, how fast would you become a vegan? <laughs> that's the question, because that's where it's at, because that's where all the support. So if you abolish the supports and you abolish the tax breaks and you put agriculture in a side-by-side in -side comparison with everything else, nothing else stands a chance. The best health advice comes not from the god of medicine, Asclepius, but his daughter, Hygieia. See, Hygieia is like hygiene. Right? The goddess of health. So the whole food vegan diet is the best bet for a healthy life. Now, I found that out, and it took me a lifetime. I mean, for the first 33 years of my life, I was not vegetarian. 1975, I became vegetarian. Did I plan it? No. Was it on a whim? Yes. Why did I say, okay? I don't know. The time was right. But then I got tired. I mean, I, when I, go, when I go into, I used to go into restaurants and say, can I have a pizza please, no cheese? And they would say, what? I said, I don't want any cheese in my pizza. There's not going to be a pizza. I said, I'll tell you, I'll make you feel good. Put extra vegetables on the pizza in place of the cheese and we'll be good. So uh, my favorite pizza is at CPK. It's the vegetarian pizza with no cheese with extra vegetables. And I love it. And I walk out, and I'm not bloated, and I'm not full, and I don't, I'm not full of hanabata that I get from the, from, from the dairy. It's the best thing I ever did in my life. And I have energy that's you know, going through the roof. And I don't know, I don't, what, I mean, if I can do it, anybody can do it. I'm not, I'm nobody special. I'm just a guy on the planet. I just took control of my life. Money is hard to come by. I value every dollar that passes my hands. Why would I want to give that to some pharmaceutical industry or some doctor or some guy in a restaurant who's so fat that he has to stand 12 feet back from the counter, otherwise his stomach presses in you know, his back. Okay, so. <laughs> okay, I will. So, if anybody, if, if anybody wants to take a shot at me and ask me questions, if I can. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yeah, the tea that Down to Earth makes, the iced tea, because I gave them that recipe. <laughs> so I know it's good. Fat. Fat. And you eliminate fat from your diet. But, well, I, I would eliminate all fat in the beginning, but then you could add avocado is a different kind of fat than flesh fat. I mean, avocado is fat. But that's healthy. But in the beginning, you eliminate all fat. 
type 2 diabetes will go away in two or three days. Then if you're on a vegan diet, no matter what you eat... Okay, the question was, is it enough to be vegetarian without eating organics? Well, I eat 99% organics because, I'm, frankly, I'm not into pesticides. And frankly, I don't want to, I try to put as little poison as possible in my diet. And I understand that organics cost more than commercial, but I don't go to doctors and I don't take drugs and I don't have any illnesses. So for me, if, if I have a choice between organic or non-organic, I only eat organic. It's always been that way. And when my girlfriend buys commercial produce, I won't eat it. I'll only eat organics if I can. If, I, if I'm locked in and I have no choice, then it's far and few between. Next question. Okay, he, he said it's not what you eat, but what you do with what you eat. So he asked me, what do I do for activity? I play two hours of basketball a week, teach women's self-defense classes, I race walk, I body surf, I swim, I do whatever it takes to sweat. Okay, one more question, then I'm signed out. Yes, ma'am. It's, it's told that vegans don't get vitamin B12 because basically you get vitamin B12 from flesh foods. So if you buy a vitamin B12 supplement, you'll get vitamin B12. But there's hardly ever been anyone with a shortage or a vitamin B12 deficiency. I think that's a wrap, folks. Sorry. If you guys have any more questions, I'll be glad to hang around. You can just feel free to lay them on me. Thank you all for coming tonight. We want to invite you to enjoy some delicious vegan refreshments over there. And if you will, uh, please, if you can, uh, help us by putting away the chairs. And we need to keep the food off the wood floors, and we need to be out of here by 9. But uh, otherwise, thank you very much for coming, and have a safe return home. Good night, everyone. This program is brought to you by the Vegetarian Society of Hawaii, a nonprofit organization dedicated to sharing with the community the many benefits of a vegetarian diet. Free monthly meetings include vegetarian experts found locally and on the mainland, quick and easy cooking demonstrations, and helpful and delicious food samples. Members enjoy an informative quarterly newsletter, social activities, and discounts at many vegetarian-friendly restaurants and health food stores. For an application, call 944-8344. That's 944-8344. Or visit our website at www.vsh.org. vsh.org.